The number of patients suffering from autoimmunity is growing year after year, and a number of patients with autoimmune diseases are looking for new strategies to improve their health. Is hyperbaric oxygen something they should be exploring? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Autoimmunity is a very complex conversation, literally defined as a condition where the body's immune system is attacking healthy cells. In my background and in my training, our body would never attack itself, attack healthy cells. There has to be a trigger. There has to be something that the immune system is recognizing and attacking it. The body wouldn't do something like this for no reason. Imagine the role of our immune system. Our immune system was designed to say, this is self. These are the cells that make me up. Let's not attack those. And this is everything else. Every invader, microorganism, food particle, liquid, solid matter that you've ever eaten or put into your body. And its job is to go down the list and understand what is safe and what is not safe. What do I need to tag? What do I need to attack? And what should I allow to come in? The immune system is unbelievably robust and complicated, but it's literally our line of defense from the outside world. In cases of autoimmunity, where the body is literally identifying self tissue as foreign and attacking it, creates an ongoing, chronic, and unbelievably high level of inflammation, which is likely to persist for years and years and is very destructive to our cells and our tissues. In the traditional world, somebody with an autoimmune disease, it's an immune system disorder. One would think that you should go to an immune system doctor, but that's not where we end up. We actually end up going to the doctor of the organ that's being affected. In other words, if an autoimmune disease is affecting your joints, that person ends up at a rheumatologist. If an autoimmune disease is expressing itself in the intestine, they end up at the gastroenterologist. If it's an autoimmune disease that's affecting their brain or their nervous system, we end up at the neurologist. Even though the source of the problem is actually in the immune system, there is no immunological doctor that understands the complexities of the immune system from that angle. And so we end up going to the doctor that treats the organ that the immune system is attacking and destroying. The solution in that is typically to reduce inflammation. So that patient will start out on a series of steroids, take those as long as they can tolerate it, and hopefully get the inflammation under control. And if not, end up on a biologic, which while effective at controlling a lot of symptoms, has many other consequences associated with it. So the question is, are there any other options for patients like this to help control inflammation? Is there a meaningful approach to rebalancing the immune system, to reducing inflammation, and to promote some healing of tissues to help heal any cells and tissues that have been disrupted or destroyed? As we open this conversation about where does hyperbaric fit in this conversation, I wanna be crystal clear. While we have many patients who come to our clinics or the clinics that we support all over the world, hyperbaric oxygen is not the treatment or the cure for autoimmunity. In fact, we've done entire series of videos on not using hyperbaric as a direct treatment for a disease, that we shouldn't have a protocol for a diagnosis. Hyperbaric is much more complex than that, and autoimmunity is much more complex than that. Understanding hyperbaric's mechanisms of action and applying them accordingly helps us create much more meaningful and much more broad programs of care for patients with a variety of different diseases and disorders and make them much more effective for that patient to get the results that they're looking for. Why should somebody with an autoimmune disease consider using hyperbaric oxygen as part of their therapy? Again, let's go back into the mechanisms of action. So for this conversation, we'll talk about vasoconstriction, we'll talk about reducing inflammation, we'll talk about balancing the immune system, and then we'll talk about tissue repair and regeneration. So depending on which disease we're talking about, which diagnosis we're talking about, there's a different set of symptoms depending on which tissue is being disrupted. But generally speaking, with autoimmunity, we may have some amount of swelling and edema. And we know that one of the mechanisms of oxygen, even without pressure, but certainly once we add additional pressure with hyperbarics, oxygen is a vasoconstrictor. And as we have vasoconstriction in our circulatory system, our blood vessels and our lymphatic vessels become less leaky. And so we can reduce swelling and edema using hyperbaric oxygen. And we've seen that play out in dozens and dozens of patients. We also know that hyperbaric oxygen reduces the cytokine response. It reduces the inflammatory response and it helps to balance the immune system. How does it do that? Well, we know that hyperbaric reduces the inflammatory cytokines, it increases the anti-inflammatory cytokines, and it helps to stimulate the regulatory cytokines 
whose job it is to keep the balance of the immune system, calming the immune system down from this hyperactive attack on itself. And lastly, most of these patients with autoimmune diseases for many, many years have tissue damage done to whatever these organs that are being affected by the immune system onslaught. And lastly, let's talk about the regenerative quality of hyperbaric because most patients with autoimmune diseases have damage and destruction in the cells and tissue types that their immune system is attacking. Can we heal and regenerate those cells and tissues? We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. Can we heal and regenerate those cells and tissues? Well, we know that hyperbaric releases a lot of growth factors, growth factors that help rebuild new blood vessels, rebuild new neurons, rebuild mitochondria for increased ATP production. It helps to heal damage to the cell, to the cell membrane. It helps to heal damage to the DNA and the epigenome, the instructions that lead us to repair and regeneration. We also know that hyperbaric releases growth factors that stimulate fibroblasts and collagen synthesis, which are the soft tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, the cartilage, the muscle, the skin. So healing of all of these different tissues is absolutely stimulated with proper use of hyperbaric oxygen. So is hyperbaric oxygen the treatment for autoimmunity? No, because it's not a treatment of disease. But does hyperbaric oxygen offer hope and a strategy for reducing inflammation, improving immune function, and stimulating tissue repair and regeneration? Absolutely yes. And as a result, many patients with a variety of autoimmune diseases find results and benefits by using hyperbaric oxygen. Is this a one to three to five hour treatment? No. Most of these people have had chronic inflammation. They've had at least one, if not more, autoimmune diseases for a number of years, if not decades. So this is something that takes 30 hours, 40 hours, 60 hours, maybe more. We should see progress throughout that entire time, but in order to really get meaningful changes inside their body, they're likely to need hyperbaric oxygen a few times a week for months at a time, not days at a time. And there's really two ways to think about this strategy. Certain cases of hyperbaric, you do a series of treatments and you're done. Let's say you had an injury to your elbow. If you use hyperbaric to help heal that injury, once it's healed, you're finished. You can choose to do more if you want, but ultimately once that tissue is repaired, it's repaired. Autoimmune diseases are different that way. In most cases, we're able to reduce inflammation and stimulate repair and regeneration. However, it's not a cure, meaning that the autoimmune disease is likely going to continue even though we're creating these positive changes inside their body. And therefore, we're likely to do a pretty significant initial protocol, as I was describing, 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours of care. But because the disease process will likely continue, if we get the results that we're looking for using hyperbaric, then hyperbaric should continue as well. Whereas we might use it three or four or five times a week in the beginning, maybe we'll use it once a week or twice a week or once a month or twice a month ongoing. But it's likely that this person with an autoimmune disease, if they found benefit from their initial protocol, some amount of maintenance ongoing is really going to be important to maintain the changes that they achieved. They also may choose over the course of years to cluster another series of sessions. So we might have done an initial cluster of 40 hours. We then went to two sessions a month for a few months. But then we do 10 hours or 15 hours or 20 hour clusters, either because there was an exacerbation in their symptomatology or to try to get ahead a little further on the disease process. So there's a multitude of ways to consider those protocols. I'm just trying to give you some ideas, but we have to base it on how they're doing, how effective our therapy is, how quickly their disease is progressing and how aggressive we want to be with the treatment. A lot of the work that I end up doing while consulting with many different clinics all over the world is helping to develop those protocols because I believe that there is not a single protocol for rheumatoid arthritis or a single protocol for Crohn's or colitis or a single protocol for MS. Each person has their own version of that story and we can develop meaningful protocols based on those patients' experiences. And so if you think you might find that helpful and or 
If you're struggling to come up with these meaningful plans and programs for patients, understanding how to develop protocols with hyperbaric and or all these other modalities and tools that we use. In fact, we have a program, the business implementation program, where the whole goal of that program is a year of consulting, helping practitioners and clinics develop these meaningful protocols and these meaningful care plans, not only using hyperbaric, but how do we combine hyperbaric and red light and PEMF and supplementation and detoxification? How do we create meaningful programs and plans around our business to get the best results for the patients and clients coming in? So if that's interesting to you at all, shoot us an email at support at hbotusa.com and we'll shoot you some information on what that program looks like. I hope this information helps create some guidelines for how to view the use of hyperbaric oxygen in cases of autoimmunity. Again, not as a treatment of the disease, simply as a way to promote health and healing and regeneration through the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Thanks again for tuning in on this video and we'll see you next week.